morning everybody well another day on the homestead and uh today this task is auto shack hub wheel bearings and i'm guessing they fit the liberty and uh and uh oh i don't know whatever else takes that size probably the liberty Grand Cherokee, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, some of the older Jeeps, the Nitros. Um, I think they're all the same kind of platform. Uh, maybe even the minivans. I don't know. It's uh, probably a pretty popular hub. But, uh, yeah. It takes uh, takes quite a bit. You know, you've got to have a little bit of elbow grease in here. You know, I don't have a lift. I don't have, you know, I'm not using air tools. I'm just it's all, all by hand, eh? So yeah anyway that's one of the other things i didn't really get to talk about in my other videos is about knowing how to do your own stuff knowing how to do your own mechanics your own repairs your own diagnostics you know i invested in a professional diagnostic bi-directional code reader and uh, scan tool um it's by think diag and it's actually cheap, and I think, I don't know if they have the special going on, but uh, I got it through a video of a mechanic video, and uh, it gave me all the programs for at least a year. So, what I mean by all the programs, all the, all the, all the manufacturers' uh, data, like uh, for whatever, for whatever, uh, whatever make a vehicle, like... Okay, so right now, you know, I have my, my, my Kia Optima Turbo SX. I got that one. I got my, of course, my Ford F-150 uh, that I had. And that's, I got all of Ford's data on here. I got all of Kia's data on here. I got all of Dodge's data here now on this because of this Nitro. And when, when I download a program, when I download a program on, uh, on uh, the Think Diag, um, it gives you gives you all of it, everything it gives you all of it, man. You can you can you can test real time. It's bi-directional. You can communicate with stuff. You can you can activate stuff like injectors and this and that. And uh, you know, for you that are not mechanically inclined, um, on top of homesteading and doing all this other crap, I mean, I I got my hands full, man. You know what I mean? And uh, this is just another part of it, right? So, you know, rather than me going and spend a thousand bucks, because that's what it would be, over a thousand bucks to have a shop put you into hub bearings. Okay. Um, why do I know this? I, I, I brought my Ford. I said, hey, man, how much? Well, not only do they want $500 a bearing, uh, you know, it was going to be a ridiculous amount of money anyway. It probably would have been over fifteen hundred dollars. I think they wanted. I wanted. I think they wanted um, um, five hundred dollars for the bearings, and they wanted, you know, with everything labor and all the shop supplies and all this and that, a thousand bucks. So I didn't get. I didn't dig any further into that. I said, okay, thank you. See you later. Bye bye. Anyway, <laughs> make a long story short. I do all this stuff myself, but I, you know what I mean. Sometimes my back hurts. Sometimes. I don't feel like it sometimes I'm just downright lazy uh, and unfortunately with all these things and all all the stuff else that I gotta do um, being lazy sometimes really not the truth it's it's just overwhelming sometimes it's just overwhelming overwhelming uh, just overwhelming uh, scenarios anyway I wanted to make sure I had the orientation right on this backing plate because I forgot. I forgot its orientation when I took it off. But anyway, not a big deal. That's only a backing plate. But I guess I got it right, right off the back there because the way it was turned. But yeah. So anyway, folks, I'm going to basically show you. I got both these bearings from Auto Shack. And you know what? From what I can see right now, um, these are hardened studs, you know, um, you know, uh, this is, uh, this is good stuff. 
You know, I got I, I got the pair of them for 135 bucks. You know, I was expecting you know maybe some cheaper Chinese stuff there with no, you know, no mounting grommets, right? To you know to clip them back into place where it goes, right? So here's where there's where your uh, that's where that plugs in and see where those two little dots are. There it goes to a plastic clip, clips onto your speed sensor. And, uh, I mean, a lot of guys put, you know, anti-seize and, and, um, and different, different products on their vehicle, like, you know, on their screws and Loctite and all these and other stuff, you know. Um, all I know is back in the day, they didn't have all that shit, right? Use a little bit of grease for shit that didn't move. Use a little bit of heat for stuff that didn't come apart. You know, I'm old school in that sense, but, uh, you know, this is an 07 Nitro, four-wheel drive, 3.7 liter. Um, and this is Atlantic Canada. Everything's rusty and rusts out here and ain't, ain't no good for nothing after not, not very long at all. <laughs> so, yeah, people here spend a lot of money on vehicles, you know, maintenance and repairs and what have you so it's probably a lot more than any other place around the globe you know um definitely uh in the warmer climates you don't have these issues but anyway thanks for watching folks i'm going to put this all together and uh like you see right here it's only three bolts a backing plate you know your speed sensor your your rotor your and your brakes hey eh? you know how all that all goes together don't be intimidated by this it's not, you know, use a little bit of grease, you know, you uh, arm grease, you know what I mean? Like, you need a little bit of power to take that, that axle nut off there. That's, I mean, that's torque to 100 pounds, right? So, you know, pulling it off after it's sitting there for a long period of time, it's, it's probably way more than 100 pounds torque to take it off. But, uh, you know what I mean? Eat your Wheaties in the morning and you're going to be able to do it. Okay? See you later, folks.